Hi everybody and welcome to our Monday Facebook live broadcast. Uh, my name is Erica and I'm an education coordinator here at the Alzheimer's Society of Simcoe County. Um, so welcome if you're watching if you want to maybe drop a, a note or, or drop an emoji let me know where you're watching from that would be great. Uh, I'll be talking about programs and services today and these are programs and services that we offer here in Simcoe County. In the Alzheimer's Societies here in Ontario, we are local service providers. So if you're watching from outside of Simcoe County, you might want to check with your own local Alzheimer's Society to see what programs and services that they offer. Uh, many of our programs are core programs, so they are the same across the province, but each society does have some, some programs that are specific to them, so it's good to uh, check it out. So again, welcome. Um, just to let you know, along the way today, I do hope that you'll uh, give me some of your questions or make some comments along the way. There is a little bit of a delay uh, with me, so if you um, write a comment, just uh, be patient. I will see it up here and I will address it as we go through the broadcast today. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to just kind of share with you the vision of the Alzheimer's Society of Simcoe County. So our vision is that uh, people that are living with Alzheimer's disease and related dementias uh, and their care partners as well, that they live well and thrive in their communities. And so our programs are really geared um, to support people along their journey and to uh, help meet this vision. First of all, our main office, uh, our offices are currently closed to the public due to COVID, but you can certainly reach us there. Our main office is located in Barrie, Ontario, and we do have a satellite office also in Aurelia. Uh, you can reach us at our offices right now, uh, phones, probably one of the best, <laughs> the best way to reach us. Uh, the phone number is 705-722-1066. You could also send an email, which is simcoecounty at alzheimersociety.ca, or you can even just send us a message here on our Facebook page and uh, we will get back to you and answer your questions or get you connected to any of the services that I'm talking about today. So first of all, uh, you know, accessing our services, uh, we hope that when somebody gets diagnosed with uh, dementia, whether it be Alzheimer's disease or another progressive dementia like uh, vascular dementia or Lewy body dementia, um, that the healthcare provider that they're seeing will connect them to the Alzheimer's Society by sending us a first link referral. When that happens, uh, we have our first link care navigator who then reaches out to that family that's been referred and talks with them a little bit about their situation, finds out what kind of needs that they have, gets them connected to our programs, but also can connect them out to other programs in the community. Uh, for example, maybe they need some support with transportation, uh, get them connected to local services that can provide that, or the adult day programs. Uh, so it's a great way to start navigating those healthcare services. But you don't need a healthcare provider to get referred to the Alzheimer's Society. A lot of people just self-refer. You can contact us uh, by calling us or sending an email or putting a message here on our Facebook page and we'll start the process to get you connected to services. So don't feel like you need a doctor to get referred to our services. Um, you can certainly uh, refer yourself. So when we think about the information and referral, so our first link care navigator um, often sends out an introductory package with a lot of different information that's uh, included in that. Um, you can also access a lot of information on our website, which is alzheimer.ca forward slash Simcoe County. Uh, lots of great information on there. But you can also uh, even reach out to me and as an education coordinator, I can connect people with uh, different information that they're looking for. So if, um, you know, again, if you wanna just call our office at 705-722-1066 and they can get you connected to me. So as we go along today, if you wanted to engage with us and maybe tell us uh, if you've accessed some of our services, if you feel comfortable doing so, or maybe drop a heart or, or um, let us know what your experience with our services are, that would be great. Or if you have any questions to please feel free to ask them. So one of our core services is supportive counseling. We do have five family support coordinators on our staff. Each one works in a specific geographic region. Our family support coordinators are really the, the primary support person for families. So they often provide that emotional support, especially right now during COVID when people are, are having a really tough time. 
Um, but they can also get people connected to services as well. So maybe as they're talking with a client and they, you know, they realize that somebody needs a certain kind of support in the community, they can help facilitate that connection. Um, you know, they'll sit down with families if needed, you know, as a, as like a family council. So they really um, are sort of like the, the go-to person that a family will have. So when they're having issues, they know they can contact their family support coordinator and get the support that they need. We also have five peer uh, care partner uh, support groups. Sorry about that. So we have five groups that meet monthly and there are different times. So there's a few that are evening um, or during the day and different days of the week. So there's five that run monthly and they are uh, that peer-led support. So it is care partners supporting other care partners. Of course, right now these programs are being run virtually over Zoom, but they still are, you know, that that is available for people if they want to connect with other care partners and talk about what they're going through with others that understand the journey. Uh, as far as education programs go, so as the educator, this is my area. Um, we have a Right now we're doing a virtual six week program for people who are living with dementia. It's called Living Well with Dementia. It is uh, one hour, uh, once a week. And we talk about, oh, like we're running one today. We're talking about living safely. And so looking at risk and having conversations around risk, uh, which is a really important topic when you're living and thriving in your community. How do you do that safely? Uh, we also talk about topics like building resiliency and adapting to, to changes. So that program is being run for people living with dementia and they often attend with their partner in care, um, often their spouse or partner or one of their kids or a good friend or whoever. But you don't need to attend with somebody else. I can certainly attend alone as well. And I offer a lot of different education programs for family and friends. And so with family and friends, when you're that main uh, support person for a person living with dementia, knowing more about the disease and, and the changes that it brings, and some support strategies to, um, to help that person that you care about. Uh, it can be really, really helpful. It can really prepare you to help manage the changes through the journey. And so if you're watching out there today and you're interested in that, um, we are offering our introductory course for care partners this evening, actually. Um, and it's not too late to attend if you're interested. You can just send a message on the Facebook or again, you can call our office and join us tonight. So again, these programs are being offered over Zoom. Another role that I have is to do public awareness and education. So that's why we're going on to these our social media sites to do these live broadcasts. Uh, because of course, right now with COVID, we're not going into uh, retirement homes and libraries and all the things that we normally do to help create awareness by doing those in person presentations. Um, so we're making uh, use of these social media tools to help bring awareness out to the community. Um, I do sometimes do some education for healthcare providers as well, although there are other people in the system that do that uh, healthcare training, but you know, that is an option. So if you're watching today and you're interested in some public awareness for your group, if you're with a group, um, I am more than happy to do that. Of course, everything is virtual, but I have done some presentations for groups over Zoom and certainly it's a possibility. We also have a number of social programs that we offer. So we know that when somebody is living with dementia, how important uh, cognitive engagement and social connection and uh, exercise, all of that is for managing, managing the disease and living well with dementia. And so right now we are offering uh, Minds in Motion, which is one of our core programs. And we're offering different uh, weekly cognitive engagement sessions through Minds in Motion. We're also offering a weekly exercise group and a weekly drop-in coffee social chat. And so these are the ways that we're trying to uh, get people connected. Of course, right now, this is a real issue for many, many of the people that we support um, because they are so isolated, not getting out to their usual activities uh, and accessing their usual supports. We also uh, just got a grant from the uh, community Foundation of Aurelian Area. I want to make sure I got that right. And that has allowed us to start a musical memories program, which meets once a week. And we have a music therapist from Music Therapy Services Simcoe County who is coming in and doing that program for us. They're running in six week blocks. So there's one running right now, but there'll be another one that's starting in January. So we know that music is uh, often really great therapy for people living with dementia. So we're really excited to be able to offer that program. 
And we also have uh, a funding that we received, and I have to get this right too, the Canada Emergency Community Support Fund through the United Way of Simcoe Muskoka. And that's allowed us to put together activity kits. And again, because we know that people are isolated at home, and so we want to provide some activities to keep them engaged. And so we've been able to put together some kits that were offered free to our clients and volunteers are out there delivering them to our clients as we speak. Uh, it's right in time for Christmas. So if you're interested in getting an activity kit for your family member, um, certainly let us know. Again, you can comment in the, send us a message here through our Facebook feed or you can call our, our uh, office at 705-722-1066 and then we can get you connected with an activity kit. So just a few statistics for you. So those are our core programs that we're offering. So the, the support programs, the education programs, and then that, that social engagement piece. Um, we do, just a last year's statistics, we offered services to 1,159 people in Simcoe County, and one third of those were people living with dementia. So we are seeing that number increase each year, that more and more people living with dementia are accessing our services. Again, if you don't live in Simcoe County, uh, there's an Alzheimer's Society where you live who will offer many of these similar services. So the core services, the support services, the education programs, and in most places, Minds in Motion are core services. But each local society sometimes has those unique programs, like uh, for us, the activity kits and the musical memories are unique programs that we've been able to offer because of local grants that we've received. So there might be some unique programs in the society where you live. Um, the easiest way to find out which society covers your service area is maybe to go to the main Alzheimer's Society website, which is alzheimer.ca, and check that out. Okay. Um, so just to wrap up this session today, and um, to let you know that these services, uh, the Alzheimer's Society is a charitable organization. We do receive funding from the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care for services, but uh, we still have a large portion that we raise uh, through different events and donations in the community. So, of course, as with all charities right now, we're all struggling because of COVID. Many of our different events haven't been able to run. And so tomorrow we're actually launching 12 Days of Giving, which is our year-end giving campaign. So if you're considering maybe making uh, a donation to a local charity here at the end of the year, and you're thinking that maybe this is a charity that you would like to support, um, I know that they will be starting to, starting tomorrow, we'll be putting different posts on our Facebook page about the 12 days of giving. I believe anybody who does give is going to be entered into a draw for a special gift if they give during those 12 days. But there's other ways of giving as well. So we, we rely on, on our wonderful volunteers. So if you're interested in volunteering with the Alzheimer's Society, um, you know, you can get connected with us there as well. And even just sharing your story about uh, your journey with dementia, all of that helps to build awareness. So if there's any way that you'd like to support the society through this 12 days of giving, uh, we would love to hear from you. And again, you know, check out the, the Facebook page um, over the next 12 days and you'll find a lot of different posts to, to help you um, figure out what the best way is that you can support the society. And so that brings me to the end of uh, this week's broadcast. I'll be broadcasting again two Mondays from now. So I can't remember the date right now, but not next Monday, but the Monday after. And we'll have a different topic uh, for that date. Uh, but thank you very much for joining. And I do hope that you will join us again.